So this equation 11 that I gave for the uh, inert mass fraction, you can rearrange this, and I'll let you do that uh, since it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you can get, you can solve for inert mass from equation 11. So here we have the answer for that. I'll just put a square on that. So this is telling us the relationship between inert mass to propellant mass. And F inert is a number that you get from the structures people. And it's a number you can't usually do much about uh, once you've chosen the uh, materials that the rocket uh, is going to be built out of. The initial mass, mi, and the final mass, m final, are related as follows. So we have a number of equations here. Final mass is payload plus inert. What does that mean? This is essentially the dry mass. Okay. That is, once you burn the propellant, all that's left is payload and inert mass. And then this is sort of the wet mass. The initial, that's everything. Um, the payload, the inert mass, and the propellant. And you can write it this way, or you can write it as, as these two terms being m final plus m prop. So just different ways of writing it. Now we're going to try to obtain, we will obtain an equation relating propellant mass uh, to the payload mass. So that's what our goal is right now. Find, you know, find uh, propellant mass as some function, okay, of um, payload mass. There's other equations that we'll derive. Uh, this tells you, though, if you, if you have a certain payload, you want to get it to a certain velocity, and you have a known specific impulse and uh, inert mass fraction, uh, then, and delta V you need to get, uh, then uh, that number for the payload will tell you, in those other numbers, how much propellant mass you need. So it's a pretty important equation to have. So we're going through some algebra here, and I, I may, may skip over it uh, a little quickly uh, and leave it up to you to work through the details. Uh, but let me outline for you what's going on. Um, from equation 7 and 13, we have the following. This is equation 7 right here. I just replaced it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, equation 13, uh, we already had that. <clears throat> Uh, we plugged in for m final this value, okay? So this is essentially uh, from equation 13. <clears throat> and from equations 14 and 15, we get the following. Um, equation 14 is uh, this equation. This is just all the things that go into the total mass, okay? And then uh, this is equation... 15 that we just wrote. Okay, this is this is this guy up here. Now notice that equation. This is a complicated looking, um, but equation 16 has only m payload Uh, m inert and m prop. Now, as I said, we want to get an equation for um, m propellant in terms of m payload. And we have in equation 16 the uh, payload, the inert mass, and the, uh, the propellant mass. So we want to eliminate the inert mass from this equation. So we're going to use equation 12, which puts inert mass in terms of propellant mass, and that gets rid of the inert mass. Okay, so that's all we're doing, is ultimately getting propellant mass in terms of payload mass. So I'm substituting equation 12, which I just showed you, into equation 16. Okay, so equation 16 up here, wherever we had inert, here, and here we plugged in 
f over 1 minus f prop, mass prop, f over 1 minus f prop here. Okay, I'm, I dropped the subscript inert just to save space. <clears throat> and now I can gather all the m prop terms on the left. So here's m prop. And so the first term I have with m prop is f over 1 minus f. And then I have f, m prop by itself, there's a 1. And on the right I have, I'm going to have to subtract this, so I have minus f over 1 minus f exponential. So all the m prop stuff's on the left. On the right, I've got the payload. I'm going to put m payload. So we have um, <clears throat> m payload times the exponential. And then we subtract this because it's on the left, so minus 1. Then I divide this, all this stuff, this square bracket stuff, um, which is down here now. Okay, so this guy has gone over to this, m prop, and notice that uh, I put this stuff, I have f over 1 minus f, then I have 1, which I wrote 1 is 1 minus f over 1 minus f. Then I have minus f over 1 minus f. Notice that this term f over 1 minus f cancels with this second minus f over 1 minus f. I put a 1 there so I can remember what, what I canceled. In this case it's only one thing. And so this guy is completely out and we have a 1 over 1 minus f, a minus f over 1 minus f. I multiply all of this by 1 minus f to get rid of the stuff downstairs. 